Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time for episode 3 of Better Call Saul Season 1. We saw Saul get himself and those two skateboarders out of the situation with Tuco out there in the desert. Although the two skateboarders didn't come out unscathed, but it, it was better than them being killed, which is what Tuco was going to do. So we saw Saul kind of using his skills as a, as a litigator or as, a, as an attorney, someone who speaks for a living. And he was able to talk his way out of that situation. But then, of course, that kind of brought him to the attention of Tuco and his associate. I don't know if it's a cousin or a friend or whoever he may be. The man that showed up at Saul's office sometime thereafter and wanted to scam that couple out of that 1.5, 1.6 million, whatever it was. So it's going to be interesting to see if Saul is going to go down that rabbit hole. Well, I say if he's going to go down that rabbit hole. We know he's going to go down that rabbit hole because we know Saul from Breaking Bad. Of course, he's not Saul yet. He's Jimmy. So still have to learn that. I'm, I'm probably going to call him Saul throughout the entire series, so tonight, it's going to be episode 3 of season 1, and maybe episode 4 as well. Now, if you're interested in watching my full-length reactions to this, or some of the other things that I've watched, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31mike. And I'll leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. Now, let's go ahead and jump into episode 3 of Better Call Saul. Yeah, <laughs> nice cell phone. Are we back in the past here? Charles McGill, visit. We must be back in the past. I figured since I saw that saw that cell phone, the brick. <laughs> Who's his client going to be? Here's Johnny. Hey, I oh. you come. <laughs> it's Saul. All right, you're safe for Jimmy. Surprise. You're looking good. Anyway, he looks different with long uh, hair. As you can see, I'm in a, a bit of a pickle. You certainly are. Charges you face being labeled a sex offender, Jimmy. You're like, that is insane. Okay? That, that is a trumped up load of horse crap, Chuck. Come on. Is that what I tell the judge? Trumped up load of horse crap? I'm not the <laughs> lawyer here. Okay, but it was a simple Chicago sunroof sex offender. That's not even remotely a. <laughs> I haven't seen you in. What, five years? Hmm. We barely hear from you. Now that you're in it up to your neck, you can't even call me yourself. You have mom call me. Mom took it upon herself to call you. I was just letting her know where I was. You didn't hmm. cry to her on the phone? What? No. You didn't cry and beg mom for help. What? Jesus. She hears what she wants to hear, okay? Can we, can we talk Cook to County, yes, uh, Las Vegas? I think. Clark County, that might be what I'm thinking of. I would not only stop letting you down. You know what? I'd stop letting me down. Everything you're doing, everything you're involved with, that's over. <laughs> Look what he's going to get involved with in the future. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Oh, this is at that uh, spa. Oh, that's uh, the guy that was with Tuco. Hello? Hey, it's me. <sighs> Jimmy? What's, uh... Jesus, what time is it? Clock says two. So, uh... <laughs> you think that's the only reason I would call you at this time of night? I mean, just give me give me a little bit of credit, okay? And you're not talking dirty to me either. Okay, bye. I knew it. <laughs> I'm joking, just just joking, having fun with you. I am 
I'm calling you tonight with quality PG phone conversation. PG-13 at worst. <laughs> uh, hand to God. Uh, you're uh, probably swamped with work anyways, Will, with that big, fat, giant case falling right into your lap. Which case oh, he's calling to get intel. <laughs> yeah, bad shortcut. Hey, uh, how much exactly did Kettleman get away with? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, but I'm a taxpayer in this county. I think I have a right to know. He got away with a million, million six, at least. Where do you stash all that dough? I mean, besides for buying that idiotic boat. Hello? Or maybe he's giving them some hints. Jimmy, why would you say that? What? That the family might be in danger. I'm just uh, I'm hmm. thinking out loud. I'm spinning thoughts. You sure? Yeah. Well, if he didn't mean to give her some tips, it might not have been such a good idea to call her. Not if he's planning on going after him. I'm no hero. Maybe that was on purpose then. Oh, he's calling the Kettlemans. He's going to warn them. Kettlemans, you're in danger. You're in danger. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? Craig, who is it? <laughs> I am not sure. His little Wait, voice say, disguiser say isn't working again, real please. well. Yeah, what are you trying to say? This is a warning. You're in danger. The this is a friendly stranger. Your whole family is in danger. The money... The can you call back on a better line? Kettleman, you're in danger. They're coming for your money. Bye. Uh, now they know his voice. What did he say? We're in danger. They're coming. Who's coming? Are they already there? Yeah, they're already there. <laughs> hmm. Good morning. What do you mean? What did I mean? No, oh, that's her. Kim, why, are you, why are you asking me this? They've been killed. No, oh, damn it. Here, I'm in a real rush. I didn't have time to get the validation. Fine, nine bucks. <laughs> I, I don't have it. I have five, please. You know the drill, money or the validation. Look, this is an emergency, okay? A serious, serious emergency. I have to get out of here. I promise. Might this be where Mike comes in handy? <laughs> Screw you, geezer! <laughs> that might come back on him. Oh, is that the coroner's office? Or the coroner's van? Yeah, he shouldn't have called his girlfriend or whatever she is. Jimmy, what brought you here? Me? I, uh, I, I was surfing the police scanner. I heard there was big activity out this way. Well, there's no business for you here, so maybe next time. Yeah, it was hmm. a home invasion. Uh, the Kettleman's okay? Uh, we don't know. The place is ransacked. No sign of the family. There's no note, so. Oh, okay. So they could have just cleared out. This might have nothing to do with Tuco's crew or whoever that guy is with Tuco. Why did you come here? I'm just supporting a friend in her time of life. Why are they supporting you? Tell me why you said those things last night. I'm just reading tea leaves. See? I don't know what happened to them. Really, I, 
I don't know. I kind of think they cleared out. The more explaining I have to do to him, and I'll talk to you later. Hey, you'll tell me if there's anything I can do. She just wants him to leave. Probably wasn't a good idea for him to show up. Oh, is he going to call the guy that was with Tuco? Yep. Nacho, leave it. Uh, Nacho, that's his name. want to help you de-escalate your situation uh, legally and otherwise. Just to clarify, look, I don't know anything. Uh, I have spoken to no one, and uh, there are no rats on this ship, but for the sake of everyone involved, I would just like to open a dialogue. So 146-8729, call me when you get this. Be there a while. Oh. Hello? Hello? Nacho? Nacho? Hmm. Hmm. So what does that mean? Just walking. <laughs> Just rolling along. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't just being paranoid. Oh, thank God! Help! Help! No! Show no! Show no! Oh, they're police. No, they're oh, I got bad knees! Ow! Oh. Uh, uh, I'm an attorney. Easy! Hmm. This is lawyer. Who's lawyer? Oh, the police were monitoring his phone. Okay. <laughs> uh, those two detectives, they just gave me an earful. And what they were telling me is it's problematic. Hmm. What were they telling him? A neighbor lady saw a suspicious van parked across the street from the Kettleman's house two nights mm. in a row. She wrote down the license plate. It was your license plate. But if you tell me where the family is, if you give them up now, full cooperation, deep remorse, I feel very good about knocking your sentence down to the minimum. Hmm. 20 years? 18 years, yeah. He didn't have anything to do with it. They ran, didn't they? You miserable piece of shit. Hmm. Does he know that that, that Saul called? What? You gave my score to another crew and now you're setting me up. I, what the what? Did the cops beat you? Because you're talking <laughs> like a person with head trauma. You think you're funny? What are you saying? Are you saying that you had nothing to do with this? That was your van outside the house. You weren't there? Yeah, I was there. I was casing the place. That's it. You had nothing to do with the Kettleman's. I was never in the house. Yeah, the Kettleman's got out of town. I told my plan to one other person. You. Now here I am under arrest. Well, if the neighbor lady saw his van, he just explained that. <laughs> the cops are out there right now poking into my business. And if they find something on me, it's going to be bad. Hmm. So Saul needs to, Jimmy needs to get him off. Bad as in for dead men. Hmm. Yeah, the Kettleman's just got out of town because Saul warned him. Jimmy warned him. I asked if he knew anything. He didn't tell me you were representing the lead suspect. I didn't know <laughs> it at the time. You know what you're going to do? You're going to get your special CSI people, right? And you're going to test the blood from that van because I guarantee you one billion percent it's not the Kettleman's. Test it. 
That'll take weeks. Well, isn't that convenient? You've got an innocent... <laughs> Of course, he's just contaminating a crime scene, or a potential crime scene. So, what did we miss? He's going to notice something. JoJo's room? She's seven? Yeah, he's going to notice things that have been taken. The doll. She's holding a doll. He's... Where's the doll? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Where's that? Uh... Got little shoes, a bunch of clothes, a table and chairs, a hairbrush, but where's the doll that goes with all this stuff? In every picture of this little girl, she's holding the same doll. So where's the doll? She's got the doll because they got out of Dodge. Doll is gone. Girl is gone, which means doll and girl are most likely together, which means... I have no idea what that means. Which means the kid wasn't dragged out of the house, ipso facto. Ipso wait, facto. Wait, what are you saying? They got out of town. Maybe the Kettleman's kidnapped themselves. Why would they do that? They staged this to throw everyone off. You guys are looking in the wrong place. Who knows how many miles into Mexico or Canada they could be? You, you got to put the word out. It's possible. Then you have Unlikely. to look into it. Unlikely. All their cars are here. There's no record of a taxi or car service to the house. I need to talk to you alone. Is he going to tell the truth? To be upset with me. No way am I making that promise. Hmm. I called the Kettleman's. After I hung up with you, I gave them a warning call. A warning call? Yeah, I was worried my guy Varga was going after their money, and he was. He was going to rip them off. I deduced it from a conversation that we had. It was lawyer to client, so there was, you know, confidentiality issues. But you didn't do the sex robot voice. I did <laughs> the tube and the whole thing, which probably scared the living shit out of them, and they took off. No, I have to convince the cops that... I'm right. Get them to stop looking at Nacho and catch the Kettleman's. <laughs> They're not exactly masterminds, right? They will be caught if the cops are looking for them. So you tell them to, would you? So how does he figure out where they are? Where are you going? I'm going to go talk to Nacho. Try to make him see reason. <laughs> now he has to answer to Mike. Come on. <laughs> Somewhere else isn't where somewhere else. Not my concern. Uh, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna park right here. I don't think you want to be doing that. You gonna gum me to that, huh, geezer? Yeah. Oh, 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 Okay, here's the deal. You assaulted this man. Give me a break. I barely touched the guy. But you laid hands on him first. Finger. I laid finger on him. Well, whatever your interpretation, it was still an assault. Now, this gentleman is willing to let this go, not press charges, if you help us out. You gotta get your client to tell us where he has the family stashed. But guys, I'm the definition of a broken record on this one. Nacho is Nacho Man. <laughs> Nacho Man. Kettlemans took themselves. You're gonna keep playing that line? It's gonna go rough. You know what? Do your worst. All right, let's go. To book him. Yeah, sure. Fine. Hey, guys, wait a second. Hmm. I changed my mind. We talked about this. You want to press charges? No. No, I don't. What are you doing, buddy? I thought you had our backs. No, I don't think I said that, buddy. Maybe Mike sees some value because he wasn't willing to give up the guy. Okay, don't tell me, all right? I already know why you did it. Yeah? Hmm. <laughs> Why do you believe me? How'd they get out of the country? They didn't. Odds are they didn't get out of the neighborhood. But, but why? Why not run? Nobody wants to leave home. <laughs> so now he just has to figure out where they are. Camping. <laughs> Well, maybe they're out camping somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, they're up over that hill, aren't they? Hmm. 
Oh, hopefully he's going in the right direction. Yep, I hear voices. <laughs> he's found him. <laughs> Is he going to have cell signal? Hey, it's me. Listen to this. If he can get him to go back. Here's Johnny! <laughs> hey, Warren. Hey, Jojo. Uh, sorry about that. I'm your Uncle Jimmy, all right? Now, your parents <laughs> are going to take you down the mountain back to your house. Does that sound good? Kettleman, no. time to ship out. No! Yes, you are! <laughs> no. This is happening! No, this yes, is it is! Happening. You're done! Yes! Kettleman! No. You're That's the money. No. That's the money. <laughs> yep, the jig is up. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing came out of this. Saul has brought himself to the attention of Mike. And he has, I wouldn't say impressed him, but if Mike is involved in some of the shenanigans that we know he was involved in, in Breaking Bad, that might have just opened up that relationship for Saul, uh, for Jimmy. And of course, this also means that this guy, Nacho, is going to be getting out of jail and they're going to see the value in Saul as well, uh, Jimmy. And, of course, now if Mike is not involved in those things, maybe he gets into it because of Saul and because of Saul being involved with Nacho and Nacho being involved with Tuco. So that was a good episode. It's going to be fun to see how Jimmy evolves into Saul and how that whole situation that we know he gets into evolves. Now, if you want to help the channel out, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any comments about this episode, please leave some comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload each new reaction. Go along with me on this journey through Better Call Saul. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on episode four.